I'm Dr. James Stabitz with OrthoGeo, and I'm going to show you how to put on the short leg immobilizer Flexio. The reason we would use a short leg immobilizer is to, anytime you want to stabilize the foot or the talocrural joint, also known as the ankle or the subtalar joint right below the talus. Usually we see this with some sort of ankle fractures or an ankle sprain or a foot sprain. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we have our measurements correct so we can apply the correct size. So how we're going to do this is we're going to take, take our tape measure and in centimeter, I'm going to first measure around the metatarsal heads, all right? The heads of the metatarsals here, all right? And I'm going to take this measurement, 23 centimeter. And now my second measurement is going to be around the belly of the gastroc. Find the belly of the gastroc, right in the center of it. Again, we're in a centimeter here. And we have about 36 and a half centimeters around the cast, right? And we have about, let me just get that measurement one more time. Then we have about 23 centimeters around the med far full head. So I'm going to Take a look at the ortho heel chart. I'm going to look at my short leg and I'm going to find where my patient falls into which category that's going to determine what size is going to be the most appropriate for them. So taking those measurements of the cast of comfort and the head of the metaparful, she fits perfectly with a medium and I had a medium right here. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to take out any kind of foam pads and I'm just going to place those aside. Now I'm going to take out the short leg immobilizer that comes in this black bag. Also have some zip ties that I'm just going to place to the side. Now, the reason why it's in a black bag is because it's activated by light. So anytime that it's exposed to, exposed to natural light or artificial light, that's going to increase the light rehood that the resin inside the silicone is going to harden much faster. So I want to decrease that likelihood that we have it in this black bag here, and that's going to protect it. If I open this up and expose it to any kind of light, um, natural light, I have a couple of hours. Artificial light, you have about 20 spore it out. So before I open it up, I'm going to want to put on with blood because I want to protect my skin just in case there's any potential leakage of the resin out of the silicone. Although highly unlikely, we just want to make sure that that is protected. Now, I'm going to bring it all the way to the bottom now. I'm going to take my scissors, and I'm just going to cut open the bag, put the scissors down, and I'm going to take the short leg Wetzio out of the bag. I'm just going to place that bag to the side, just in case... I need to ring package it for whatever reason. If I have a leak in the, the resin or if the silicone is broke, I could place it back into the bag and ship it back to the main satcher and get it a plate. So now that I have this open, I'm going to take a look and you can see that we have this black rubber that's going to protect the skin of the patient from the resin when it starts to harden up and becomes a little bit more solidified. It does warm up a little bit. So we want to make sure that the skin is nice and protected and that this isn't broken and there's no wrinkles. So just do a quick inspection. Again, this is a rare occurrence, but just in case that there are any kind of cracks in the resin or if the silicone is leaking, then you could always repackage it and send it back to the manufacturer and they'll replace it. We want to take a look. Make sure that there's no crack. 
looks good up here. Good. Okay. Do a thorough and full investigation of the brace prior to application. Okay. We're good to go. Now, you can see around the smaller end of the brace and the larger end of the brace, there's quite a significant difference in size. This is telling us that this is going around the foot and this is going to go around the gas rock or the cat. Now, you can see that this has a lot of elasticity in it, meaning that it stretches and then it can go back to its residual shape. That's done on purpose. Some patients that we see have larger calves and smaller ankles. So this type of immobilizer will help accommodate those individuals that have them. I mean, same thing with the foot region. Nice and elastic, right? The elasticity, nice and stretchable, and then goes back to its original shape, okay? And now when you hold it, the product, you can see it's nice and robust in this region right here. You could see the diamond. This area, this is where the calcaneus is going to go. This is where a lot of the support in that ankle is going to be, right in that towel pool subtalar region. Okay. So we did our inspecting. Everything's good. I have all my products. I have all my supplies. Now, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to place this down. I'm going to let my patient's leg up. You okay? Yep. Put this down. And that diamond that I was talking about earlier is exactly where her retrocalcaneal region is going to be, right directly on it. That's going to be a good landmark for you to not. Okay. Now, before we do anything, patient, can I see your other leg, please? I'm just going to take your sock off. Is that okay? Before I do anything, I want to check dermatomes. And my tone, the patients, can you feel this? Yeah. Can you feel this? Feel this? Can you feel this? Yeah. This? Yeah. This? Good. This? Good. All right. You want to check the posterior tibial artery on the medial aspect of the ankle, right behind the medial malleolar. Make sure that they are symmetrical bilaterally. Check dorsal pedal pulses on the top of the foot making sure that they are symmetric. And then you also want to check cat leap refill. So she is neurovascularly intact distally. Now, anyone who handles the Flexio short leg immobilizer must read the instructions for use first. This is going to give a lot of good information on the general description of the immobilizer, the key feature, what the immobilizer is for, what's its intended use, right? as well as indications, contraindications, patient population, and patient need. And so anyone who is handling the brace and a patient needs to make sure that they fully understand uh, the importance of how to appropriately apply the Flexio short leg immobilizer as well as take it off. Now, I have my patient here. We're ready to start to zipper up the brace. We already did our inspections. I already did my neurological and cardio or and neurovascular evaluation. She is neurovascularly intact distally. I'm going to go ahead and you get the zipper on. And I'm just going to zipper it up just halfway for right now. I'm just going halfway right now. And then I'm going to take my piece of rubber foam right here. And I'm going to add this protection right in this talocrural region. I want to make sure that the lateral malleoli and the medial malleoli are nice and protected, as well as all the sensitive structures that run anteriorly and posteriorly to these two areas. Right? So I have my pad right here. And now, I'm going to be able to zipper this up just a little bit more. Make sure that it's nice and protected. I'm going to distract away from the skin so you don't pinch your patient at all. So distract the zipper away from the skin so the patient doesn't get 
caught in the zipper. If I'm going to readjust this pad, and now I'm going to be able to do the lower leg region of the brace. The zipper on. Again, make sure that you just distract a little bit, just so you're not pinching the skin. Make sure that your patient stays at 90 degrees. That's really important. So make sure that when we do this, okay, the zipper, this portion of the zipper is not touching the skin. It's nice and protected by that pad that we put underneath. Everything is in a straight line going right down the tibial shaft. If for whatever reason this zipper is bothering your patient, you can always add another piece of foam right underneath it to help protect the skin. That's okay too. Right? And again, make sure that our patients are at 90 degrees. We're good. Ask your patient if they're okay. I'm okay. Right? Make sure you check capillary refill. Can you feel this? Yep. Good. Can you feel this? Yep. Good. Dermatomes and myotomes are all intact. Blood flow is adequate. Right. And now, so you might run into a situation where these zippers don't go all the way up. For example, if somebody has a longer leg, but a really short foot, this area where the zipper is on the foot might not go all the way up. Right? That's okay. That's okay because once this solidifies, once the resin solidifies, this isn't going to go anywhere anyway. Same thing with the top part of the lower leg. We can unzip just a little bit, and that's okay if your patient can't fully zip this all the way down. Some patients have a longer lower leg, or I'm sorry, a shorter lower leg and a longer foot. So this might not zip all the way down, and that's okay. It doesn't need to. But my patient, this brace fits perfectly on her, so I'm going to zip it all the way. I'm going to make sure that that's nice and tucked, and that's good. Now I'm ready for my zip ties. Remember, I want to keep this at 90 degrees. I'm going to keep this at 90 degrees, so I'm going to slip the zip tie right through here. Right through here. And I'm just going to put it at. I'm not going to tighten it all the way yet. I'm just going to put them in and then secure them later after we're done curing. Oops, I'm going to do four total, two on each side. To help provide a little bit of stability in that towel pearl region. Good. That's two on that side. I'm going to do two more over here. Patient, are you okay? I'm dead. Good. Continue to talk to your patient. Develop that rapport. That trust is very important. And one and last zip tie over here. Good. Okay. Now we are just about ready to cure. Now, before we start that, we want to make sure that this is in a straight line. The zipper around the foot is in a straight line. You'll see me. I'm going to add a little bit of pressure on the metatarsal heads right here. I'm going to get the toes something to grab onto. Now, I'm not going to put the toes into full toe extension. I'm just going to provide them a little bit of support. The toes go into slight extension. Just naturally, I'm going to provide them with a little bit of support. Same thing over here. You'll see that this kind of pops out a little bit. So I'll be sure to make sure that this is coming in to supply, to supply more support at that talipural joint and that subtalar region. All right. So before we even get started with that, I'm going to need to make sure that my patient's eyes are protected. And my eyes are protected, so I'm going to put on these blue light glasses. There you go, patient. Good. 
All right. And now I'm going to explain to the patient what they're going to be experiencing. They're going to be experiencing some warmth. Okay. If it gets too hot or too uncomfortable, you need to let me know. Okay. Okay. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to harden up the area around the hinge ankle joint. Okay, this is going to allow this area to harden much faster. And it's going to take a lot of pressure off the patient. So she, if she's actively trying to go into dorsiflexion right now, she can start to relax a little bit because the solidified resin is going to take the place of that. So she doesn't need to do any more work. But right now, she's doing great. Okay. Now, this is a blue light. Right? This blue light is going to activate a chemical reaction within the resin that's tucked inside this silicone. And I can see that I have a good support area in the region that I'm going to be solidifying, as well as the area that uh, is there's no resin area that's actually touching the skin. Okay, there's no resin area, there's no silicone area that's actually touching the skin. Okay, so patient, I'm going to turn on the blue light. It's going to warm up in an area, and then you're going to hear a beep. Every time we hear that beep, I'm going to change to a different location of your lower leg, okay? And so the first one that I'm going to do is right here on the lateral aspect of the ankle. I'm going to turn the light on, and I'm going to shine it right here. I'm going to press in. We're a couple inches away from the ankle. I'm not directly on top of it, but I'm not so far away that it's not having any kind of effect. And we're going to hold this for a couple seconds. The patient should start to feel this warm up a little bit. We heard that beep. Now I'm going to go to a different region. I'm going to go to the bottom of the foot here. I'm going to go to the bottom of the foot. I'm going to make sure my patient stays at 90 degrees. I'm going to the medial aspect of the lower leg here. And now I'm going to come to the top. The patient, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Good. And now I'm going to make my way towards the lower leg here on the lateral aspect. Good. Patient, I'm going to come up to the more proximal region of the lower leg. Patient, you okay? Now I'm going to go on the medial side. A little bit more distally on the medial lower leg. Good. I'm going to go underneath here. I'm just going to lift my patient's leg up. Patient, you can just relax. And we're going to go right here on the calcaneus and the Achilles region. Good. And now I'm going to find areas that I need to mold a little bit. So I need to make sure I get underneath the arch. I'm going to, just like I said before, I'm going to bring these, uh, the toe plate up just a little bit. So the toes are nice and comfortable and protected. Mm -hmm. This area right here, it's still a little soft. So I know I need to add more light there. Patient can lift the alert. I'm going to make sure that I have a nice mold right here on the lateral or the posterior aspect. Same thing with the calf region. Now I'm going to turn the light off. Or turn the light off, and now I'm going to inspect. Make sure that there's no areas that are soft, you can go ahead and try to move around the silicone to see if there's any loose areas. I have a loose area up here that I need to harden again. Just palpate around. Patient, are you okay? Okay, that's the only soft area right up here. That's okay. I'm just going to take the light, turn it on.
Let's see what's good. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and pull the zip ties. Good. We're going to cut strings here. Cut that. And cut that. Two. All right, you want to check Caprifo again? Patient, can you feel this? Yeah. Can you feel this? Yeah. Good. Neurovascularly intact distally. You can get this wet. You can bathe. You can shower. You can soak this. You can get this wet. Uh, if you are going to go into the ocean, if you are going to go into the pool, that's okay. Just make sure that it's adequately cleaned when you get out, right? Just rinse with gentle water. And if there's nothing in here is going to absorb any kind of moisture, right? It's all going to wick away moisture. However, if it does get wet and you want it to dry faster, you can just take a hair dryer and just blow on that region on the cooler setting, and that'll take care of that relatively quickly for you. Now, this is a non-weight-bearing short leg immobilizer. This is a non-weight-bearing short leg immobilizer. Okay, so no pressure should be put on the plantar aspect of the foot here. Uh, however, we do have foot shoe, uh, a mobilizer shoe, uh, that we can use in order to provide some support and some comfort to prevent any slippage. But in no way is that shoe for uh, this cast to become non-weight bearing to full weight bearing. But, however, um, we are approved for pediatric patients up to 60 pounds to be fully weight bearing. But adults or anyone over 60 pounds, uh, this will remain a non-weight-bearing short leg immobilizer. If your patient starts to develop any kind of allergy or any kind of allergic or adverse reaction in their lower leg, um, just make sure that you notify your provider right away so they can address that appropriately. Since this is a short leg immobilizer, a lot of patients that we see We'll have to use a rollabout or a knee scooter. That's okay. You could just take a piece of the rubber foam and you could just stick it right under here to help protect that tibial tuberosity from getting irritated. So we also have a shoe that can go on the plantar aspect of this short leg immobilizer. I'm going to go ahead and lift my patient up and I'm going to have her go ahead and push her heel as far back as she can. Good. And then it's just Velcro straps from there. Really easy. Now, this is recommended uh, for, for pediatric patients who uh, potentially could be walking around anyone under 60 pounds. This is a full, or this can be a full weight bearing cast. Um, being the shoe helps provide support. You can see it also has a little bit of a arch here to help go with the different contours of the foot maybe the lateral longitudinal arch and the medial longitudinal arch you can also have underneath here the medial longitudinal arch and then the transverse arch is going to also provide a little bit more support to help go with the natural contours of the foot and this is also good to help prevent any kind of slippage if a patient uh, is non-weight bearing and they happen to put their leg down. This will help prevent or decrease the likelihood of any kind of traumatic slippage that could cause some sort of disruption to the patient's healing process as well. What I want to mention is you may have an opportunity to have a window in one of these short leg immobilizers whether it's for a wound, 
whether it's for a bone stimulator, for a fracture that's non-healing, or a malunion or a non-union, right? So very, very simple. What we do is we just take the splitters, and I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to make a small little window here. Tayshawn, are you okay? Yeah. Tip that out. Cut right here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So, if you need to, create a window for wounds, right? Or if you have a bone simulator on the fibula, you can go ahead and address that with the window right there. Um, at the same time, it's important to mention the extra layer of silicone. And if you were over here, you could see how much thicker it is from the lateral aspect. Go and wall away plantar. And same thing to the medial aspect distally. There's a whole extra layer of silicone in this region to help not only support this subtalar region from rotating inversion or eversion, but also to provide an extra adhesive just in case the patient does put their foot down so they don't slip. So it does add a little bit of that rubber effect to the plantar aspect of this. So. So now I'm going to take this off, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the splitters here and I'm going to come down laterally and I'm going to break each one of these all the way down, okay? And then once I get to this region, I'm going to stay a little bit more dorsally. I'm not going to go all the way down the lateral aspect and then shoot over on the small, uh, the picky side over here because it's going to be really, really difficult to use these breakers to break through this extra layer of silicone. So I'm going to stay lateral, go all the way down. And once I get to right where the distal tip fib is, I'm going to come a little bit more dorsally, not going anywhere near the zipper, but I'm going to stay a little bit more dorsally and work my way over. And I'm going to see where I'm at from there. If I need to make the cuts immediately, I will, and I'll do the same thing but it's going to be virtually impossible for me to get a clean break over on this extra layer distally, uh, laterally, distally, medially, and plantar just because of that extra layer of silicone. It's just going to be too difficult. Patient, are you okay? Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and break this here. Yeah. Talk to your patient, make sure they're all right. Patient, you doing okay? Doing good. Good. Moving all the way down here where I made that window before. Good. And now in this part is where we're going to start coming dorsally a little bit. I'm going to go ahead, I can cut these guys off too. And so here. Pull out the zip ties. I'll just go ahead and pull out the ones on the medial aspect also. Break them. They just pull right out. Very simple. Good, good, good. Real easily breaks right in half very quickly. Almost done. Patient, you okay? Yeah. So now I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that I have everything broken. If I need to go and use the splitters again, I will. But just go ahead and reinforce and make sure that everything's good so we have no issues getting this all off. Good, good, good. That's all separated here. Might be able to do one more down here. Same thing here. Good. Good. All right, we can spread it a little bit, loosen it up. And then unzip. 
Still ahead, we did come on now. All right, let me. I'm going to put this to the side here and for a inspect my patient's skin one last time. No issues, no reactions. Patient, how do you feel? Good. You're fine. 